Hi everybody Hi. and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I am here with my husband Larry and, me. and we are going to be doing a little story time for you guys. Something that we've never really fully explained but it's been talked about here and there. For those that are new, this is my husband as I just said and we are 30 years apart. I'm the older one. <laughs> In case you guys were wondering. And thank you. I could- OW! <laughs> it's attached. <laughs> Ow! Please don't mind my hair if you know, you know, this is whatever. So we are here today to tell our story, how we got together, how we continue to talk, because that's the big question. A lot of you guys know how we met. We met by car accident. I got into a mild fender bender in Ohio in August of 2012, and Larry was the officer that came to that car accident, which, funny story, you weren't supposed to even go there. No, I was way at the other end of town. I was about, I was closer to leaving town than I was to where the crash was. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, I got called. Yeah, it was like, it was like a fate situation. And I do want to throw it in there right at the beginning that Larry had never seeked a younger female before. And I've never been with an older man like Larry before. So we weren't seeking that kind of relationship. It just kind of happened. Yeah, when you look like this, there's not a whole lot of interest yeah. in the opposite sex. Oh, that's too. not true. You're very true. handsome. Thanks. And you're funny. Okay. And you're cute. Okay. Thank you. So, it all happened in 2012 of August. Little accident. Larry came. And then the big question is, like, that's great. That's how you guys met. But how on earth did you keep talking from there? So, the car that hit me was a minor. The girl driving was a minor, and there was a lot of issues going back and forth between the parties, and I couldn't get my car fixed until, like, situations were resolved. So, and then my parents said, you need to go up to the police station, you need to get a police report, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll go. So, I went up maybe a week or two later and asked if I could have the police report, met with Larry, and Larry, what did you ask me? I remember him, I was waiting forever for him, and I got called back to the office to talk to you, and we sat down. Yeah, one of the problems was that there were passengers in the cars, and it's kind of unusual, but everybody said the same story. This car was in this lane, this car was in this lane, they were both making left turns. The car on the inside lane wanted to merge into the outside lane. Shouldn't have done it because she was next to him. I was in the outside lane. But all the stories were the same. Her story, her passenger story, the driver's story, the other car, passengers in the other car, they're all the same. So it was obvious who was at fault. But in the process of being at the scene and talking to people and then telling the juvenile that they need to notify a parent that they were involved in, in police in North Olmsted, Ohio, um, her story changed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I didn't do that. They hit me. Well... Um, a ticket was going to be written to the driver of the other car and when the parent of that driver found out that their little one was being cited by the nasty police officer and that there was no reason why I should be doing it I should be citing the driver of the other car because it was obvious that they hit her everything kind of grinded to a halt yeah which meant I couldn't get the dent fixed in my car which is why we had to keep going back and forth but, um... In the meantime, you vacationed in Florida. Yep. So, I was trying to figure out what I could do. Uh, unfortunately, if the person is an adult, I can do what's called a summons in lieu and just write the ticket, send it off to the court, and the court mails it to the person that's going to get the ticket or whatever <laughs> last address, mm -hmm. and it's taken care of. Unfortunately, in juvenile court, that's not the way it goes. So... After I don't know how many phone calls, I either called you or you called me. I'm not sure. There was a bunch of them. I finally called the prosecutor at the juvenile court, explained the situation to the prosecutor, and the advice given was go ahead and write the ticket, treat it like a summons and lose, send it down to me, and I will make sure it gets taken care of. Which meant I was able to come up to the station again and get what I needed with the report and get everything that I needed to get the car fixed. Finally. But what did you ask me when I went there? This is what did it all. This 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 little line right here is what created what we have today. The question was, 
have you ever had anyone take your picture? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> no, you said, do you like getting your picture taken? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Mm. And I was like, I mean, I guess, I think, I'm, maybe. And I'm thinking it's some kind of like promotion for drug counseling or some kind of promotional thing for the police station. And I'm like, I mean, sort of, I guess, you know. But then... I explained to you that I was trying to get a photography portfolio. Photography for portfolio. That's not easy to say. Yeah, so then he's like, well, I'm not going to talk to you about it here. I'll um, I'll send you a message later. And I was like, okay. That was very odd. <laughs> and I left and I'm like, he's a creeper. There's something wrong with him. <laughs> and um, that's how we started talking. And we just texted from there. Larry never did really take my picture. I never posed for like any photography or anything like that. And... Um, well, you have like way after that. Yeah, like way after. Like Larry yeah. will take my selfies and pictures like that. But at the time, I was in a terrible situation relationship with a boy, and it was just it was really terrible. And we were we were like roommates, really. It was <laughs> I had two roommates, and it was an awful situation. Um, and I was just kind of like pouring my heart out to Larry and. He was such a good listener and so sweet and so understanding and just was listening to all my my problems. I'm like, Wait, poor what? thing. <laughs> there was a lot of problems. I was going through a lot of stuff and we had a meet up at a park for the first time. I went with my best friend Angela because I'm not going to meet a strange man that I don't know at That's a park. That's a creeper. By myself. That's a creeper. I'm like, I'm not going by myself. And I had told Angela enough. If I'm not back in like 10 minutes, call 911. <laughs> So I go and I'm walking around the park with Larry and we're just talking about life and that's really kind of all how it really just unfolded and it just went from there and then we got married in 2016. Well, yeah. Well, we moved in together and all of the, you know, dating and all of that happened in between, but... Yeah, there was, there was a pretty big gap between that, that first question at the police station and when we actually yeah. started involving yeah there was a big gap a relationship yeah we didn't really start dating until like what was it 2014 15 yeah. yeah we were talking but it wasn't like there was just a there's yeah a lot of like because again gap i between. had no no intention no i i didn't think it was gonna happen that way and then i even um larry had moved in with me at my apartment and I panicked and broke up with him. And I had said that it's just, I, I need to figure out my options. Yeah, it was after... It was, it was a while. Well, yeah. yeah, it was somewhere in that gap. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like we, we you had texted me and then we met. It was, it was years into it and we were talking and he moved in. And then I had that panic mode and told my family. Well, I told my mom and my mom thought it was a phase, which... It wasn't, but I panicked thinking I should be going on dates with guys my age, and I did. So I kind of like stopped seeing Larry for a couple days, bye bye. a week, and I was going on dates and with guys my age, and the whole time I'm just thinking, where's Larry? What's he doing? What's he eating for dinner? <laughs> I mean, like, I was just thinking about Larry, and that's well, when and I realized. Some of your conversations at dinner weren't exactly the the deepest conversations you said you've ever had with people. Well, the one date I went on, we go to Olive Garden, we had to toss back three, like, which is ridiculous, two or three bottles of wine we had between two people. It was so, like, awkward, and he was so sweet, but it was just, like, it, we just had to keep drinking wine to, like, get talking, and it wasn't like that with Larry. With Larry, it was just so effortless and easy to talk to him, and it was just, like, and she was in relationships that involved more time with her male companion focusing on and playing video games. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. And I think that was one of your concerns. You asked me, what video games do I play or what game systems? And I was kind of thinking, geez, you know, she maybe she's into video games. I don't own a video game. I don't have game systems. And I'm thinking, man, that's, I'm probably going to probably gonna get her upset that I don't have any of those. And I was honest and told her I don't have one and she got relieved and, and it's just the difference between Larry and I versus the boyfriends I had in the past was you know he was he's a good listener he wanted to listen to me and we would go out to parks we would travel we would see things we would have fun and 
we were living life. It wasn't like I was sitting on the couch watching my boyfriend play video games for hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> And then there was one time, this this was like what sealed the deal. I was so ill with like the worst sore throat ever and Larry drove 25 minutes to get me mint chocolate chip ice cream and he dropped it off to me and it's just like such a simple caring soul he is and... That was easy. Yeah. He was just very simple and sweet and caring and lovely and... But yeah, that's really how it all kind of unfolded. Yeah? Yep. And, and then, we had, when we met in August, fast forward that a few months to October, I was working at the reformatory in Mansfield, mm -hmm. and they shut down in September their, their tour operations, and they turn over the building to, uh, basically he rented the building for a couple months, and he was, um, Myron, if you're out there. Hi. Hi. He looks like Dracula. He kind of does. The living, real-life Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big guy. But um, he was doing the Haunted Reformatory. Mm -hmm. And there's, obviously, the, we, we, the building was rented to him, but we didn't just up and disappear. We were there kind of, I kind of acted as a liaison between him and, and uh, the people that ran the building. If he needed something, I tried to get it for him. Or if we needed something from him, I would be the guy that would go ask him, hey, can we do this, or can you get that, or can we move, whatever whatever it was. And in the process, we were always overwhelmed. There were some nights when we had 5,000 people go through the building. So we needed help. And you and your friend Angela, yep, we they did. were good helpers. Yeah, well, kind of. <laughs> Sometimes we would sit on the steps and just watch everybody and watch everything unfold throughout the night. It was like the most fun experience ever to sit yeah, at the haunted house and you got to meet a lot of people and if did. those people needed something or they needed to find out where I was to see what I was doing because I would go they hunt needed him me. down. She would be able to track me down. And I always say, knew. Yeah. So hey, um, knew where he was. Uh, <laughs> the gift shop needs this or something. So yeah. So our relationship, I mean, we've been together, we've been married for, it'll be four years, and we've known each other since 2012, and it just kind of happened, and it's been the best thing ever, <laughs> and here we are. It just kind of happened. It just kind of happened, and this is where we're at. And, um, Hi. Yeah, so to anybody who, you know, a relationship that you weren't expecting kind of just happens, just, just go with it, don't try to fight it, and... Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. I mean, I was for the longest time, and there's no point in suffering and being unhappy because you're worried about what everybody else thinks. At the end of the day, everybody's going to have their opinion about you anyways, but it's what goes on between you and that person that matters most, not the opinions of everybody else. You know, as long as you two are happy and love each other, that's what matters, and that's what it came down to. And that was the biggest piece of advice that I got also, because, again, because of the age gap, I'm thinking I don't want to, I don't want to mess her up. And they said, is she happy? And I said, yeah, I, I really think she is happy. And then they asked me if I'm happy. And I said, well, I'm definitely happy. They said, life is too short. You know, there's, there's countries that have been known to the world for centuries. And our lifetime is maybe that or definitely shorter. Uh, if you're happy and she's happy, go be happy together plenty of happiness to be going around. Yes, thank you, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey quote. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, that's how we met. That's how it continued. And that's how our relationship unfolded. And we're very happy and hoping to continue the journey further on. And uh, yes. yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Subscribe if you would like to follow our journey. And we will see you guys again very soon. Bye! Bye. <gasps> Luna! Lexi's right there by the... Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> Lexi. Oh, Lexi went and ran into the bedroom. Aww. Oh, that's all right. Hi, Luna. <laughs> <sighs> I know which one it is. <laughs> it's probably standing up.